I'm here with Joe Bennett of the Bennett Group. Uh, Joe, you saw about 600% success last year in terms of growth from the year before uh, to last year. Looking at that number and, and that amount of growth, what does that signify to you of, of what you put in last year? Yeah, I think um, obviously like a lot of hard work. There was like zero luck. Literally, I think one person came to me to sell their house. Everyone else I had to go find. So it was grueling, but I think you really get what you like in terms of um, investments. I think working with coaches and stuff, a lot of people thought I was crazy, but I'm like, dude, there's a learning curve to this business and you can literally buy your future time back. Mm -hmm. So I think getting 600% is learning things and working with people that are way smarter than me and know what they're doing. And I literally just did what they told me to do and it just, it worked. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people would probably stop there on the surface of going, wow, 600% growth in one year. But I want to know about the growing pains that were a part of that 600% growth, because it's definitely not always pretty. Oh, Talk yeah. about some of, of how you had to grow in order to match the level of business that you were doing. Yeah, so that's a great question because um, I try to be really transparent because I think a lot of people, and I compare myself to people that are way ahead of me, and I think they have it easy. And so for me, I'm really honest that um, it's really, really hard. Like, um, yeah, I've had times where I, yeah, I made like $300,000 last year, but I literally was like on my couch, depressed, deals falling apart. I started last year losing like five contracts in January, and that's how I started the year. I lost a ton of money. Bryn left her job to join me and it was terrifying. I had like $30,000 of credit card debt. So it was awful. I didn't know if I was going to make it. And um, so I'm super grateful for how hard it was because I don't think I'd appreciate where I was and it was not easy and it was not pretty. And um, when we started working together, I literally almost cried because I was so defeated and just really burned out and um, not profitable. So yeah, I think if you look on paper, it looks great, but in real life, it's just, yeah, it's just really hard. It's it's not easy, so. Well, and I, I do think that it's important. So, you know, <clears throat> your first year in real estate, you sold how much? Like 11 houses. Okay, and it equated to? Probably like three and a half million, something like that. All right, uh, and then last year, you and I started working when? Uh, last March. Right. So from January to March, what did you do? Do you remember what your volume was like the first quarter? Probably like four or five deals. That's all. And where did you end the year? Yeah, around 40. Transactions for a total of how much? Uh, 13, 13, five. Yeah. And you know that I care about the numbers, but I really care about what the numbers signify. So you had mentioned, you know, $30,000 of credit card debt. Mm -hmm. You'd mentioned, you know, being a little bit fearful about Bryn taking that leap of faith and, and joining you. And so we're down to one income and it's mm -hmm. commission based. Uh, are you at $100,000 of credit card debt now? Where are you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I had to learn how to be profitable. Um, I had never really made money until Bryn got in the business because um, because of the lag, right? The first six months I was in real estate made zero money. Then the next six months just made up for the money I didn't make. So I started the year at zero. Mm -hmm. She left her job. I, I didn't even make enough money to make up the money I wasn't making. Now I had to make up hers too. And I was terrified. And I didn't tell her that because she would have been freaking out and I had credit card debt. So no, I actually learned how to be profitable. And um, it's crazy. Um, I think to really succeed, you have to be really humble and know you don't know what you're doing because we can be good at selling houses, but it doesn't mean we're a good business owner, right? Like I love to spend money and make stupid purchases and I'm learning that's not, that's not okay. You know, like my expenses are crazy and I'm finally in year three getting that under control. So no, I don't have any credit card debt. I have a lot of money saved up for investments. We almost pulled the trigger. So if interest rates didn't go up, so high we would have our first rental property right now but um yeah things are things are rolling so well uh you kind of mentioned uh, a, a love for spending money and i know that in terms of personal development that that has been something that maybe has clouded the way that that some things have been for someone who has dated a few coaches and and have gone to different you yeah. know development seminars and things what would you say is different about your experience of what we have been able to do over the last year together yeah that's a great question yeah i've worked with six coaches already including you 
And um, yeah, I'm not working with any of them anymore, but you. And I'll be totally honest, I'm not. Just I'm protective. That's, yeah, that's what it you is. definitely are. <laughs> and I did stop working with you for like one week, and um, quickly. And I told you, I was like, if things get weird, they got weird really quick, and I was like, I'm gonna back up really fast. So with you, um, I literally just stopped working with another coach, and I'm really open about this. I think the difference is. Um, you show up every single coaching call ready to go. I've worked with really great coaches and uh, eventually it's just like, so what do you wanna talk about? And um, you're paying them like $2,000 a month. It's like $20 per minute. And I'm like, I thought you would know what I need to know because I don't know, you know?